In the third book of optics, Isaac Newton proposes the existence of an ether. Upon leaving the water, glass, crystal, and other compact bodies in empty spaces, does this ethereal medium not grow denser and denser by degrees, which means that the light rays are refracted in curved lines, rather than in a point. Isn't this medium much rarer inside the dense bodies of the sun, stars, planets, and comets than in the empty space between them? When it passes from them to great distances, does it not grow denser and denser perpetually, and thereby cause the gravity of those great bodies towards one another, as well as of their parts toward the bodies, everybody trying to move from the denser parts of the medium to the rarer? For the propagation of light, the luminiferous ether, or ether, was theorized in the 19th century. The ether was used by James Clerk Maxwell as a model to explain electric and magnetic phenomena, which led to what we now know as Maxwell's equations and the understanding that light is an electromagnetic wave. A series of increasingly complex experiments conducted in the late 1800s failed to detect Earth's motion through the ether, including the Mitchelson-Morley experiment. The null result could be explained by a number of ether-dragging theories, however, they were more complex and used arbitrary coefficients and assumptions. As a result of the acceleration of electrons, Joseph Flammer described the ether as a moving magnetic field. In the Lorentz ether theory, Hendrik Lorentz and George Francis Fitzgerald explain why the Mitchelson-Morley experiment failed to detect motion through the ether within the framework of Lorentz ether theory. According to Lorentz, motion through the ether would create a birefringence effect, which Rayleigh and Brace tested unsuccessfully, experiments of Rayleigh and Brace. Lorentz and Joseph Flammer applied the Lorentz transformation fully in 1904 to get all those results. Hermann Weyl later wrote that the ether had betaken itself to the land of the shades to elude the inquisitive search of the physicist in an effort to elude the inquisitive search of Mitchelson, Rayleigh and others. In addition to possessing more conceptual clarity, Albert Einstein's 1905 special theory of relativity could explain all of the experimental results without referring to an ether at all. As a result, most physicists stopped using the luminiferous ether concept. Gravitational explanations from a mechanical perspective. The most well-known formulation is Lesage's theory of gravitation, which was developed from the 16th until the late 19th century. Although Isaac Newton, Bernhard Riemann, and Lord Kelvin entertained variations on the idea. Kelvin, for instance, found Lesage's proposal thermodynamically flawed in 1873, and suggested a way to salvage it using the then popular vortex theory of the atom. In Kelvin's opinion, this kinetic theory of matter is nothing more than a dream, until it can explain chemical affinity, electricity, magnetism, gravitation, and the inertia of masses, that is, crowds, of vortices. If it weren't for the apparent perfect isotropy of gravity and the essential allotropy of crystals, Lesage's theory could explain gravity and its relationship to mass inertia based on the vortex theory. This difficulty has not been surmounted, nor has it been turned around. No fingerposts have been discovered or imagined as possible that might lead to its surmounting. In today's scientific community, none of those concepts are considered viable.